Welcome in CA football fans, Bobby Broyles here along with Rob Washburn as we begin our 12 teams in 12 days series. Rob, let's get started with you, Albany. A tough season for the Great Danes in 2018 that looked promising after a pair of wins over their non-conference FCS foes, but the league slate took a toll on this team that included several close losses. However, the dramatic win yeah. over Stony Brook last year could be a springboard for them as we head into 2019. Yeah, no question. U Albany was 2-2 two and two and had some momentum entering October, but then suffered tough back-to-back -to -back losses in the final seconds to William & Mary and Richmond that sent their season in the wrong direction. The Great Danes never quit battling, though, and closed the year with that 25-23 victory over Stony Brook when Ethan Stark bounced a 48-yard field goal over the crossbar on the final play of the game. A win like that over a playoff team certainly provided a lift going into the offseason. Looking at the Albany offense in 2019, there's an awful lot to like. The Great Danes returned their top four receivers who combined to make 137 catches, led by explosive sophomore Dev Holmes, who had 50 receptions for 734 yards and five TDs, and senior Jarrah Reeves. U Albany features one of the league's top running backs in junior Carl Mofor, and three starters are back on the offensive line. The big question mark is at quarterback, mm -hmm. where U Albany will have a new starter once again. Redshirt freshman Jeff Undercuffler showed a lot of potential while starting the final three games last year and has good size at six foot five. The Great Danes have also added Nevada transfer Griffin Don, who will battle for the starting job. Big players are an important part of the U Albany offense, and they have the weapons to make them this season. We spoke with Coach Catuso on the potential of his offense in 2019. Yeah, I think I'm excited about, about our offense. I think, you know, we've struggled, the area we've struggled the most has just been a quarterback in the last three years or so. We, we have never had a back to back starting quarterback, you know, which has been tough. And we, you know, we as coaches have been desperate for that because consistency and I think we're getting to the point where we have that depth of quarterback right now. You know, we really have. All of our receivers that played in the game last year back, they're very good. Um, we, we can't even pull out a starting group out of the top four. We, we think they're all really good. I like our tight ends. we got a couple young tight ends that are big and long and athletic that we're excited about with and, and LJ Wisniewski, who started last year as a sophomore. And I think Carl Mofar, we just think Carl Mofar by the end of the year, was he was the best running back on our football team, um, which says a lot because we had a, another good player too. And, and I think he's very complete. He's a great runner. He's a great pass protector. He can take on linebackers and defensive ends. And uh, he's a great pass receiver. It's just, it's weird to have a guy that's, you know, 230 pounds that can do all those things. So, you know, I'm excited about our team on offense. I think the quarterback is going to make or break us with the offense. And I think we, you know, Jeff Undercuffler um, started the last three games as a true freshman. And I think, you know, we brought in Griffin Dawn, who's transferred from Nevada that we're really excited about as well. On the other side of the ball, the defense returns eight starters, including their top mm -hmm. two tacklers. Health was a big reason last year, Rob, why this team dropped off a bit defensively. Yeah, U Albany was really banged up last season on defense, especially in the secondary. Yep. The only good news about that is a lot of guys receive valuable playing time, which has created a great deal of depth for the Great Danes on that side of the ball. Now, as you mentioned, the team's two leading tacklers are back with linebackers Levi Matheny and Danny D'Amico, who both recorded more than 80 stops a year ago. Nick Dillon and Anthony Lang return up front, and Eli Menser gives U Albany a dangerous pass rusher off the edge. Now, in the secondary, safeties Tyler Carswell and A.J. Missler are back, along with cornerback Kareem Gibson. St. Trans Francis transfer Jalen Williams could step in at the other corner. U Albany held two of its last three opponents to under 300 yards of offense, and this is a defense that should be pretty strong again this season. Here again is Coach Catuso talking about his defense going into 2019. I feel great about our defense. You know, we've been good on defense pretty much every year. Um, we, we, had, we sustained an, an enormous number of injuries in our back end last year and we had corners playing safety and linebackers. You know, it was just a mess for us. When we got everybody healthy and solidified, we started playing good defense again. And I think that, um, you know, we have, we have eight defensive linemen we can rotate for the first time since I've been here. We actually have linebackers we can substitute in and play and not have a drop off. Um, we, we feel like our corners, you know, we were able to add a young man as a grad transfer we think is going to help us, Jaron Williams on the corner. Uh, Kareem Gibson started last year, had a rough year, but, you know, he's, he's really done well. Uh, I think that, that uh, we're expecting him to have a really good year. And, and our safeties are very good. You know, we've got those injuries cause a lot of good depth now. Guys have a lot of game experience. So I love our defense. I, you know, we're real aggressive. Eli Menzer, I think, could be a, a real highlight for us playing on the edge of our defense. And, you know, we're going to go out and be a great defensive football team this year. 
a 3-8 and eight season for the Great Danes yeah. last year. Albany was selected 12th in the league's preseason poll. Rob, give us three things to watch out for for the Great Danes. Yeah, number one, settle on a quarterback. Whether it's Jeff Undercuffer or Griffin Don, Albany needs to get steady and consistent play from the quarterback spot. As we've already touched on, the Great Danes have plenty of weapons at the skill positions, but the offense will only be as good as the guy who's running the show. Yep. Number two, reverse that turnover trend. UAlbany forced just 14 turnovers last season, which was the fewest in the league, and committed 23. With a healthier and deeper defense, especially in the secondary, the Great Danes should be able to create more turnovers and get that big play offense more opportunities. UAlbany quarterbacks also threw 18 interceptions a year ago, which is far too many. Yep. Number three, get off to a fast start. The Great Danes have three of their four September games at home, including the conference opener against William & Mary. Building some confidence and momentum early will be important with road games at Towson, Delaware, and Stony Brook ahead. The Great Danes open up their 2019 campaign on the road at FBS opponent Central Michigan on Thursday night, August the 29th at 7 p.m. on ESPN3. Yeah, we also want to let fans know to check out our one-on-one -on -one interview with UAlbany linebacker Eli Menser. Visit cafootball.com or our social media platforms to see them now. Rob and I will be back at it again on Thursday when we preview Delaware as we'll hear from head coach Danny Rocco as he begins his third season with the Blue Hens. Have a great rest of your day.